President Biden set to hold a cabinet meeting today where inflation will surely be a major topic. And one key issue on the table, rising energy prices. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm will take questions at the White House briefing today after laughing off high gas prices just uh, last week. Watch this. In Sturgis, Michigan, it is $2.89 a gallon. I guess that's better than in California. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. As you know, of course, uh, oil is a global market. It is controlled by a cartel. That cartel is called OPEC, and they made a decision yesterday that they were not going to increase beyond what they were already planning. This comes as the Biden administration is under recent scrutiny as to whether it will shut down the Line 5 pipeline that runs through Michigan. Joining me now, Kansas Senator and Energy and Natural Resources Committee member Roger Marshall. Roger, this is what is happening to our energy sector by, is by design from the Biden administration. Joe Biden said himself, we're going to transition away from the oil industry. This is what they want. Despite the pain and suffering and the burden on hardworking Americans, they want high energy prices to make alternative fuels more economical and to force people into, say, electric cars that they don't want to drive. You nailed it, Dagan. Uh, the president realizes that they can never bring the cost of running an electric car down to what it is the cost for an internal combustion engine. So they're going to raise the price of gasoline. So just think about what he's done since he's taken over. I said back in February, gas would be $5 a gallon by Christmas, and we're on our way there. One of the things happening here in Kansas is we can't get financing anymore for drilling. Uh, that there's uh, so much of an environmental uh, ask of the federal government is that these banks are scared to loan money to customers they've had for 20 or 30 years, let alone shutting down the pipelines, uh, adding more rules and regulations, policy that's driving the price of gasoline up. I know for me, it now takes a $100 bill to fill my uh, Dodge Ram truck with gasoline now. It's no laughing matter. I don't see anybody laughing when they're at the pump. Well, it, it, what adds... Um insult uh, to the injury that people are feeling. It's the laughing. And the is it too much to ask that the energy secretary actually understand that the way the energy economy works and the way the energy sector works? Under President Trump, we, we broke the cartel. We were a net exporter of all oil products under President Trump. We were the world's swing producer where we had the, the excess capacity that we could, the excess production, uh, spare production that we could control the price on the world stage. And she's laughing uh, and, and pointing the finger at OPEC when they ought to hold up a mirror. Yeah, they can, and just put an explanation point on this. Mm -hmm. uh, just think about this nation's history. And energy has been so important to our successes through the manufacturing booms. All the things we've done in this, this country, a lot of the economy is dependent upon readily available uh, energy sources, right? And now we're becoming more dependent on foreign oil again. And that leaves our Secretary of State with less cards in their hands. So we're empowering our enemies, or at least our comp call them competitors, call them enemies, but we're empowering Russia uh, and, then, and then giving other people more leverage on us. So it's even more than just the cost here at home. It's national security implications as well. It, it, indeed, it damages one of our uh, greatest financial and economic assets, and it also uh, hands power directly to nations that hate us and want to wipe us off the planet, quite frankly. Jackie DeAngelis is here, Senator. She, wants, she has a question. Dagan, Senator Marshall, good to be with you this morning. Dagan, to your point on the U.S. being a swing producer, there is a delta right now of roughly 2 million barrels a day. So when Jennifer Granholm is laughing, what they could be doing, the administration, what she could be doing is making sure that production ramps up here in the United States. You don't have to ask OPEC to do it. And to your point about our enemies and the cartel having control, this has set us back 20 years. Senator, I'm wondering what can be done in Washington to try to counteract some of these policies. Well, goodness, I, I think we just need the, the White House to get out of the way of the energy sector. Uh, these these uh, folks that are in the energy sector are ready to go, but they can't get financing. They can't get permits. 
really, I don't think that we need to do anything in Congress except just reinstitute President Trump's energy policies. It's really just that simple, but adding this added layer of some type of an environmental score to getting loans from uh, banks for something like oil drilling uh, is just going to make it even harder. So we were in a great shape before, so we're going backwards. Let's go back to the Trump policies. It's that simple. Right, you're, and you're referring to there was a May order from Joe Biden that said that they were looking to the Federal Reserve and other bureaucracies to impose new rules on climate-related financial risk. So those rules don't even need to go into place. It just sent a shockwave through uh, the financial industry. And so they're backing off for fear that they draw the ire of this administration. Before we go, Senator, promises made, promises broken from this White House. The Tax Policy Center has found that roughly 20 to 30 percent of middle income households would pay more in taxes under this 2022 Biden, I call it the new century welfare monstrosity, breaking Biden's pledge that only Americans earning $400,000 or more would be affected by tax hikes. This is how Speaker Nancy Pelosi has re objected to Democrats' pitch for a so called billionaire's tax, calling it a publicity stunt. Those very billionaires finance her political ambitions and have for decades. But Senator or what say you about, again, the middle class getting hit by this administration? Well, our office keeps track of a list of lies told by this president, and this is, of course, one more to put on, on the books. Uh, of course, in, inflation is even a worse tax that we're seeing, uh, and it, dis, it discriminates against people at the edges of income. It is a social injustice as well. And then letting the Trump tax cuts bill run off as well uh, is going to raise taxes on middle income people. So the average Kansas family was able to keep $2,000 more of their hard earned money after the Trump tax cuts. And now, when that runs off here in a couple of years, underneath this leadership, they'll let it run off. Indeed, it's going to raise taxes on middle income uh, Americans. And, and again, I just go back to this inflation all the money that they're throwing in the economy, too many dollars chasing too few people, paying people more to stay at home than to go back to work, is just fueling this inflation as well. Senator Roger Marshall, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Dagan.